Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. My name is Attempster. Today I'm going to be going over how to do texture painting for the Blender game engine. So as we can see right here, I have a small amount of terrain, which I've gone and got four different textures and I've painted them on. And then I've got that one texture, which is also over here. I've saved it as one image and then applied that as a whole onto my terrain here. So basically what that means is instead of having to have really weird geometry, I can put all of these different textures together to fit my environment. So that's what we're going to be doing in this tutorial. And without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing you're going to have to to do is obviously have Blender and then up the top here go to file and click new or open a new blend file and then up the top here I'm going to change it to Blender game although this doesn't really matter you could have it at either or because this works in both engines the next thing I'm going to do is delete this cube here so X and delete shift A at a plane this will be my ground so I'll go over here and call it ground and then what I'm going to do is make sure I'm in textured mode and it's looking pretty strange so what we have to do is go over to the render settings change it to GLSL like that so it looks a bit nicer and now we'll just press P and you'll notice it's disappeared that's because the normals are the wrong way around so I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode go to the UV shading and flip direction then tab again to go out of edit mode. Now if we press P, there we go, there is our plane. Then what we're going to do is go over here, give it a new material. Turn off the specular unless you want to have it shiny. And back facing we can leave on because we just flip the normals. All those settings are fine. Over here I'm going to give it a new texture. Here it's going to be image or movie. And this is going to be my first texture that I want to paint onto this plane. So here I'm going to first of all change it to UV and then here I'll open up my first texture. Then the next thing we have to do is press tab, U and unwrap and that will unwrap out our plane like so. Then here I'm going to add a, another texture. This is also going to be an image or movie and this is going to be my second texture. So here I'll also change it to UV. Now keep in mind you can add as many of these textures as you like. So here I have my second texture then I'm going to open up another one. So new image, image or movie, UV and open. Okay and I'll add one more. So another texture slot, new image or movie click open okay and there we go so now I have my four different textures now what I'm gonna do is uh, first of all I'm gonna change this lamp up here in the lamp settings I'm gonna change it to a hemi so it's nice and bright like that then I'm gonna press alt R to get rid of the rotation so it's facing down then here I'm gonna make a new window this here will be a UV image editor and then I'm going to select my plane here and press tab to go into edit mode then I'm going to go over here to the materials tab and then to the textures and in here we need one more texture so I'm going to click in here new image or movie UV but this time instead of opening up a texture I'm going to click new and in here we're going to put the name of our textures so maybe we'll just call this map text for short for texture and then for the width and height 1024 is the best optimal size then what I'm going to do after that is click OK and that will make me a new texture here and then in my UV image editor here so in this window make sure you've pressed tab so this shows up and then in here we're going to choose map text like that so it will just be one big black background then over here I'm going to choose paint and then I'll open up this window here and now what we can do is go to the texture here and we can choose our first texture so for me maybe I'll make that sand now up the top here we have six different types of brushes which can affect the way we work with this the first one here is mainly used for adding color for example if I just draw here we'll just add a plain color like so I can also turn up the strength here and that will brighten it up a bit then I can also choose another color and paint that over top so that's mainly what this main brush function does and I'm fine with just using the main text drawer here so with this one here selected I'm going to turn up the strength to 1 
under the texture make sure I have my texture selected and then here what I'm going to do is also turn up the size and then I'm going to paint so as you can see I'm painting on my texture here now if you want to see it in real time in this window here what we can do is scroll up and over here we'll turn off all of these okay like that and so now you can see our window here we can see the texture we have painted and then if we paint some more we should be oh one thing I'm on the wrong side yep there we go so you can see it's working in both windows then just to give me some more room I'm gonna move this over here press T in this window now one thing that is really important while you're texture painting to notice is that over here the radius isn't only how much texture is being pushed out it's also how big the texture is so if I turn this down to say 8 or 9 maybe even 17 and I paint something here you notice the pixels are a lot more dense or the whole texture in general is a lot more dense so if I scroll in here you can see this what we've just painted is almost like a mini version of this right here and the same goes if I turn it up to say 163 and paint over here then you'll notice that's like a giant version of this over here so this radius here does greatly affect how it works so make sure you know what you're doing with that basically if you want really fine detail I'd suggest turning it down fairly low maybe around 26 so it doesn't look too pixelated maybe something like that and then also here we can select another texture maybe some grass and you can put grass here now also a cool feature that you can access is over here just above here if we make this say blue for instance we can now paint a blue version of our texture so we can actually change the look of our texture to fit our environment with the color here we can also over here make it darker and lighter just by tweaking this right here although alternatively what you can do if you just want to leave that at zero is over here you also have these functions so you can change it to add which means that if I put a thing here it'll look fairly normal I paint over it again get super bright and it just keeps getting brighter until it's just white maybe if you have some light that you want to paint on maybe that function would be good for that otherwise mix is the main one I use although also there is multiply which is basically darkens on top although you could argue it contrasts the texture a bit more as well so those are the main functions there the rest darken and lighten um, I guess they all do different stuff as you can see just by experimenting and then there's some alpha, raise alpha, add alpha, there we go and a whole bunch of stuff you can also do to affect how your textures work okay so those are the main functions there then also up here we can go to say smear for example and we can push our textures into each other smear them together like that so again this radius here maybe we'll turn it down a bit so we can get some finer smearing going like this and then also we could turn up the strength make it a bit more obvious and there we go so now we can smudge our textures together maybe I'll turn that down that's quite high and yeah you can almost blend them together like this and then also what we can do here is again we have our options so here we can make some parts lighter by sort of blending them together or smudging them together and then we could also use multiply to make them darker again like this over here then there's soften which basically does the opposite of smear so it almost pushes them back together and so what we can do here is with the clone tool we can select a texture like the grass for example and then we can paint over the sections we want to keep so like that and we can get rid of it and now we have a grass section added in also I guess we can subtract and take it away possibly I'm not sure anyway 
lots and lots of playing around which you can do. Most of these tools I never use when doing texture painting anyway. I usually stick to the main texture drawer and then if there are any big functions I need to do I'll usually do them in GIMP or something. So I'm just going to quickly go over here and I'm going to quickly finish painting my texture. So oh, I'm going to turn that to mix and I'm going to paint some concrete all over here. And uh, there we go. Okay, so that is my texture, which I am happy with. So once you have finished painting your texture and you want to save it, or make sure you don't lose it next time you open up the blend file, over here, click image, then save as image. So click in there, and then down here, save as image. You can choose your file type, turn up the compression, or I just do to make sure the file space is minimized. And then if you're using alpha in your texture, choose that. But most of the time, if it's texture for a map, you probably won't be. So RGB is fine. That will make the file even smaller. And then once you're happy with the name as well and the location, then you can click Save as Image like that. And there we go. There's your image saved. Now what you can do once you're happy with that and you don't need these textures anymore, you can click in here and we can delete all of them like that and then we can get this one up here and push it up to the top. Now as you'll see it will have selected this and it will have changed the source to desktop and map text. Now if you do decide to make some changes like this to your image and then want to save it again you don't have to go save as image what you can do is go image and then save image because you've already exported out an image so we'll just click save image and then the asterisk here will disappear and now this will be saved. Also, you notice here it updates. So, for example, here, if I was to put maybe some concrete over here, then an asterisk will appear, meaning it's not saved. Then I'll click Save Image, and now they'll be added over here. So there you go, guys. There's a quick tutorial on how to do texture painting in the Blender Game Engine. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, be sure to leave a like, comment, or share, or subscribe for more content. Either way, hope you found the tutorial helpful, have an awesome week, and I'll see you guys in the next video.